Welcome to this VetVine evidence-based update in veterinary behavior. In this segment, we're discussing a paper titled The Efficacy of Capsaicin as an Equine Repellent for Chewing Wood. This paper was published in the Journal of Veterinary Behavior by Elsevier, and I'm pleased that it brings Dr. Elise Christensen back to our space to talk about it. Welcome, doctor. I'm excited to be talking about this paper today. It's very interesting. Crib biting and wood chewing are behaviors that are considered to be stable vices by horse owners and the equine community as a whole. And because of this, there are a variety of techniques that people use to try and stop these two different behaviors. This paper is studying one alternative option with capsaicin or trying to create a taste aversion um, and a very uncomfortable sensation, not just the taste, but also the feeling of burning. Um, as you can imagine, capsaicin is an extract from pepper and is sometimes used in animals to try to stop them from oral directed behaviors. So this paper is exploring one additional option to the arsenal of punishers to stop horses from performing this behavior. Now, just some background on cribbing or what sometimes is called crib biting. This is a behavior that's seen in approximately five to 10% of stable, stabled horses. And the thing to keep in mind about cribbing is that it is considered to be an abnormal stereotypical behavior. And it, what it looks like when a horse does this is very specific. The horse grabs a flat surface, um, so usually it's just a couple of inches wide um, where they grab that between their teeth and they arch their neck, pull against the object and some suck in air while they're doing this. And it creates a characteristic sound that sometimes is called um, wind sucking. And this behavior pattern can have some um, issues that cause people to want to stop it, aside from the fact that equine people find that sound bothersome, just even having a horse that does that behavior can decrease its overall economic value because of some perceived situations where other horses may learn to do this behavior by being in the same stable with a horse that performs this stereotypy. The other behavior that this paper is discussing is wood chewing. And this is different from cribbing because in this case, the horse is not making that arching of the neck, that pulling behavior and the sucking in of air. Instead, what's happening is the horse is actually nibbling on the wood. And this is probably a derivation of normal behavior in horses because when grazing gets tough, you know, there isn't that much out there sometimes when horses are in a rough season, um, these guys will explore their environment and try to chew on anything that might be a possible source of nutrition. Of course, wood is not a great source of nutrition, but even people will eat wood if they are starving. So this behavior is really a variation of some normal things that can happen in horses. However, the problem is that it can cause a lot of destruction to wood structures and many structures that people use to contain horses are wood. So not only does it decrease the sort of aesthetic value of the stable or fence to the extent that the owner cares about that, but it also can cause some tooth wear. And for those horses that get very intense about it to the extent that they are not actually investigating normal feed stuffs, you could get a change in their body condition. Um, some could say that there is an association with colic or stomach ulcers and then arthritis of the jaw. Um, and this may be related to just the frequency of these abnormal motions or normal motions, but at a higher frequency than one would expect. So for wood chewing, um, the reasons that they might chew wood include stress or frustration, but they could, could also include um, dietary insufficiencies. So um, when we work on treating horses either with cribbing or with wood chewing behaviors, we want to create a plan that addresses the entire horse's well-being, not just the outside behavior. And this paper makes an effort to make sure that people are aware of that. 
but it is a short paper, and so they don't have the space to really devote to detailed discussions of these other aspects of treatment for wood chewing or, or crib biting or cribbing. Um, however, it is important to keep in mind that um, using a punisher, even though it is a common go-to first-line treatment for people in the land of horses, is not a rational first-line treatment for horses with these behaviors because there are a variety of underlying issues that lead horses to perform these behaviors and just punishing the coping mechanism is dubiously ethical. So the traditional recommendations for cribbing are basically get that house out of or sorry get that horse out of its stall. Um, you know we commonly keep horses in box stalls and this does not make any sense based on the science of this species. This species, left to its own devices, would spend a fair amount of time every day interacting with conspecifics, meaning other horses, um, and they would spend a fair amount of time grazing for food, moving their feet. Now, given the option to do nothing, of course, some horses will choose nothing, but the problem is, is that this isn't healthy for them, just like some people choose to sit on the couch and eat Doritos, and frankly, that sounds awesome right now. But um, it would be healthier to go on a bike ride. Um, so these are the things that we want to think about when we are addressing cribbing behaviors and wood chewing, even though they are separate problems. So basic things that we want to think about here is let's make sure that we don't have a non-performance horse on a very high concentrate feed. Or if we do have a performance horse, let's make sure that we minimize it as much as possible. In addition, we want to make sure to provide plenty of hay and foraging type options. So even if you are providing high concentrate feed, you could do things like provide it in a way that is more difficult for the horse to get, like with a puzzle toy, etc., so that the horse is encouraged to do grazing type behavior rather than eating from a bucket. Um, all of his food at one time. Again, if you were having to walk around your apartment to get Doritos, well, the Doritos wouldn't be as bad for you because you would also be moving. However, when you go just from the bag to your mouth, then you are going to consume a lot more and you're going to consume them more quickly. And then your time budget is skewed um, because as soon as that bag is empty, you are left with nothing to do. And this might mean that you change a channel on the TV and sit around some more, or that you start looking for another bag of Doritos, right? So same thing here. We want to keep our horses busy doing horse typical behaviors. And that's why we try to get these guys out of their stalls to graze as many hours of the day as possible, because this is a normal time budget for a horse. Be outside, do some searching around for predators. Hopefully you don't feel too stressed by the potential for predation, and you're able to engage in normal social behaviors and normal feeding behaviors. So when we are getting the dietary issues under control and getting these guys out of their stalls, we also want to make sure that we are actively providing an exercise plan. So that's for those horses that are like some of us and just want to sit on the couch and eat Doritos, we want to make sure that they actually have structured plans for exercise in their day. So we get a plan together for getting them out of the stall, getting them well exercised, and that's going to depend on the horse's health status as well as the horse's actual um, purpose. Some horses are very, very active normally and will need more exercise than others. And then, of course, we want to make sure that we are giving the horse opportunities to interact with other horses. Now, when you are doing this, if there is no opportunity for interaction with other horses, what we want to do then is at least provide interaction with other species. So in that case, we're looking at providing a stall companion. Um, normally, we're choosing stall companions that are not predators for obvious reasons. You know, a dog is not often a super awesome stall companion for a horse because dogs have different time budgets and different goals to their behavior than horses. However, animals like chickens or goats or ponies, um, even things that you would think sound kind of strange, can actually improve 
social stimulation for horses without adding in a lot of social conflict. Now, we talked briefly about some of the options for stopping cribbing. Um, repellents are certainly out there. Um, they vary from other things like this product that are related to food um, searching and, and trying other foods and seeing if they taste good or bad. Um, so the horse puts their mouth on the, on the um, stable, um, the, the barrier there, and if it tastes bad, they may not actually bite and then chew the wood in the case of wood chewing or cribbing as in grabbing the item and then pulling back on it. Um, and then there are a variety of collars, everything from physical deterrence um, so that the horse cannot make that characteristic arch of the neck and create that pulling sensation against the object to things that are actually painful or shock related so that as the, the animal goes to perform that behavior, something really painful happens to the horse. The problem with these things is that it's not that it can't stop cribbing, it's that we are treating a behavioral symptom of something else that's going on. So um, using certainly discomfort is questionable. Um, and while I'm sensitive to the author's discussions about this particular product, to help decrease this behavior, I want to make sure that if we're going to be adding things like that to the treatment plan for either wood chewing or crimming, that we make darn sure that we are providing these other options for the horse and treating the potential causes of the problem rather than punishing the outward behavior as our sole modality. So this study was used to determine whether capsaicin, if applied to wood, would curb licking and chewing of the wood by horses. Um, and we talked about it briefly before that capsaicin is a component of chili peppers. It's what makes it really hot. Um, and as you probably remember, when you have had hot peppers, the effect is lingering. So it's not just the initial taste of the pepper, it's also the lingering effect of the sort of burning sensation and the tingling. And um, this is one thing that the authors of the study are wanting to evaluate, whether this combination can stop horses from exploring a treated object. So this is a small study on 10 horses that are not known wood chewers. Um, so this is just an exploratory study of this particular product. It does not necessarily tell us how very driven wood chewers and certainly very driven cribbers would respond to this product. However, it is an interesting study design to assess whether our non-wood chewing horses can be deterred from perhaps starting wood chewing. So what they did was three trials with each horse. They took a clean block of wood, treated it with the test material, which is capsaicin and uh, molasses combination, and they suspended it from the pen of the horse for around 10 minutes and they repeated each treatment over three consecutive days. So trial one is the molasses treated wood. So this is getting the horses to investigate the wood itself. Trial two is the molasses plus the capsaicin. So that's days four, five, and six. And then trial three is really sort of the, uh, the money part of the trial. And that is figuring out if we remove the capsaicin, are the horses still staying away from that treated block. Because remember, most horses really like molasses, which is why I think trial two is a little bit of a dirty trick, right? It's like, hey, here's the stuff you really like and it's gonna make you really uncomfortable. Um, but I understand why they designed the study this way, is in order to evaluate whether they could keep the horse away from a very delicious substance um, by first teaching the horse that this substance is also uncomfortable. So what they did is they did some observations of the behavior for each treatment, and they logged interest in the wood object, licking the treated wood object or the fence or railing or the horse's own lips, chewing, head shaking, face rubbing, flame and response, reluctance to approach the object, pawing, snorting, and vocalization. And what they found when they looked at licking and chewing frequency of the treated block is that not surprisingly, in trial one, remember this is three days of just molasses, the horses were interested in the block. 
and licked and chewed. In trial two, the frequency of licking and chewing was significantly decreased. And in trial three, the frequency of licking and chewing went up, but it did not go up to the pre-treatment levels or the levels that the horses were interested in it before the capsaicin was present. The other responses that they found was that, perhaps not surprisingly, facial rubbing increased significantly when they added the capsaicin. This is likely because capsaicin exposure is very uncomfortable um, and rubbing is an attempt to make that discomfort go away. The other thing that they monitored was flaming and head shaking. Now, it's not surprising that a horse would shake its head if it was exposed to a trigger-like hot pepper flavor and burning in its mouth. And in fact, we know head shaking, although it is its own separate behavior problem in some horses, um, is often a common behavior of horses that have irritants in the mouth or nose. And in fact, medical problems, including irritants of the house, or sorry, the mouth or nose, are the number one things we're going to be looking for in horses with head shaking behavior. Um, so this is just another example of how a horse might respond to having that burning sensation. The flamen is an investigatory behavior as well. So again, not surprising that this horse is checking out the, the cube a little bit more because no horse really expects their environment to provide such a nauseous stimulus in this type of exploratory behavior. Now, on the third day, what they found was that seven out of 10 horses did not lick or chew the treated block. Um, the other thing to think about is that when they're doing the trial three, going back to the molasses only treated wood, all of the horses were showing decreased licking and chewing of the wood compared to trial one. And in fact, three horses would not even lick or chew the wood at all. Um, so what's important here and what the authors are hoping for, I assume, or at least what the product uh, developers are hoping for, is that the licking and chewing behaviors continue to be decreased even after the repellent is no longer present. And what they're hoping for is a learned or conditioned taste aversion. Um, I don't know that you could necessarily only call capsaicin a taste aversion substance because it is actually also painful. Um, unlike, for instance, bitter, which is very distasteful, but not painful. Um, and that's something they, they didn't really describe very much in this paper. But it is an interesting idea. Um, and uh, the capsaicin la laced molasses was effective at repelling the horses after they had exposure to it. Um, however, thankfully, in the conclusion, the authors do address these underlying issues that really must be addressed if you're going to ethically use this product, and that is making sure that you have a reasonable diet for the patient. Um, in horses, that means watching the level of concentrate, increasing the levels of fiber and roughage. Um, good housing practices, meaning let's get this horse out of the box stall because we all know from multiple research projects that box stalls are not great housing options for horses. And let's make sure that we are providing the diet in a way that encourages grazing type behaviors and provide social contact with other horses wherever possible. And if it isn't possible, let's get that horse a stall companion. Now, the authors also realize that you may need to use intermittent application of this product in order to continue to get the effect from the product. So, you want to make sure that for those horses that are going to continue to explore the location um, where the chewing or the cribbing is happening, that they are at least intermittently getting additional punishers from that location. I think this is probably the best use of this type of product, and that is don't put it everywhere the horse performs these behaviors because you want to make sure that you're decreasing these behaviors by providing the horse adequate outlets for normal behaviors rather than just punishing the behavior that we don't like for a variety of reasons. Um, when you're doing that, it would be best to limit the use of this type of product to areas of the stall or the confinement area 
that are most important or getting the most targeted destruction where it might be a problem. For instance, destroying gates is a problem because if the horse is really chewing the wood and breaking down that gate, um, now your confinement strategy might be uh, failing over time, depending on, on how intense that horse's wood chewing behaviors are. Um, and cribbing, while not typically um, taking chunks out of the wood, does put extra structural stress on the areas of the confinement. So you want to make sure that if there's any areas that you cannot make stronger, that you could apply these items there as well and see if, okay, well, you know, we have a cribbing horse. We probably have a lot of adjustments we need to make for this horse's welfare. But in the meantime, I need to stabilize this confinement so that I don't end up with an escape E, in which case using a cap capsaicin type item um, or substance could be helpful for the short term. And that's this week's VetVine evidence-based update.